Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Maximize Your Life Bible Study. It's great to see you guys once again. Uh, for those of you that are new, um, what I do on Wednesday nights is I try to enhance our faith by giving you uh, practical things that you can apply from a biblical standpoint. Uh, I try to take the things in the Bible and make them applicable to where we can apply them in our everyday life and use them in this way. I, I try to make the Bible come alive, the principles of God come alive. And I, ch I show you, I teach you how to align your life under God's blessings and favor. And so uh, last weekend, we concluded, we were talking about Esther, and we're going to continue in Esther tonight. Uh, I don't know if you watched, but man, I think it's a pretty good lesson to get you started in Esther. Um, I don't remember the exact scripture. I think it was in chapter two, but uh, hopefully you can go back and watch that. Um, but tonight we're going to uh, go go further in Esther. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish tonight because I have a good lot of information to give you, but I like to stay within the 30 minute period. I may uh, try to cut it back a little bit so I can have more to give you next week if we have to roll over into it. But we are going to the book of Esther and I am going to start uh, chapter four, verse number 13 um, through verse number 17. All right. Esther chapter 4, verse 13 through verse 17. And for those of you that have not ever read this, I recommend that you get a book, I mean, a Bible that reads like a storybook so that you can kind of better follow along because I'm just going to hit on some of the points. I'm going to give a little bit of backdrop, and I'm purposely doing that because I want you to go and read this story. And once you put everything in this proper place, I think you'll have a really good uh, general understanding of what the entire complete book talks about. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm just going to pull out some things. I'm going to give you a little bit of backdrop, as I said, just so you can kind of follow along. Uh, but uh, we are Esther chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther. Do not imagine that you are in the king's palace. Do not imagine that you in the king's palace can escape any more than all the Jews. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place and you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, go assemble all the Jews who are found in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. And, and I and my maidens also will fast in the same way. And then I will go into the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and did just as Esther had commanded him. All right. And so uh, the topic for tonight is going to come from, I believe, verse number 14. And it says uh, in the King James, it reads, how do you know that you haven't been uh, positioned for such a time as this? And uh, tonight, we, I mean, last week we talked about uh, being in position. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about position for a purpose. Position for a purpose. I want to ask you a question. Do you see yourself where you are right now as being positioned for a purpose? Do you see the things that are going on in your life um, and where you fit into that? <coughs> Excuse me. Do you see that right now in your life as you have been positioned for a purpose? Um, and I'm going to start there because uh, last week where we ended up, we ended up uh, talking about how uh, 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 Esther uh, had God's favor on her life. And what happened is she got chose to be queen due to God's favor on her life. And then this is what the text says. The text says that everybody that saw her, favored her. Apparently she looked real good in whatever she had on and she pleased the king. And so the king was looking for uh, a new queen and he didn't just make Esther his concubine. He made Esther the queen. And so I think it's significant because uh, even though God is not directly mentioned, uh, it's a sign or a showing of God's favor that Esther was chosen. And so I want to start by talking about the power of God's favor on your life. And I want to add, I want you to ask yourself this question. Is God's favor on my life? Is God's favor on my life? And somebody asked me that, uh, uh, is God's favor on, on their life? And what I said to them was, 
um, is that it's not necessarily whether God's favor is on your life. My response was, it's whether your life is under God's favor. And I hope you caught that. It's not whether or not God's favor is on your life. It's whether or not your life is under God's favor. Uh, uh, and, and, and it takes the responsibility or the power off of God and it puts it right back in our hands. And I love that because you definitely, the choices that you make can either move your life under God's favor or away from God's favor. And I want to stress that it's important to have God's favor in your life, of course, because then the door does open for you. The way is made for you. The choice that made that's going to be made is you. But the thing I want to drive home is that you can move your life from under God's favor with your actions, activity and choices. And so I love that uh, what Esther does is she aligns her life under God's favor. And what she did is that Mordecai gave her some things to do, right? And then when she got transferred over and she was living in the king's palace, the chamberlain, the man that ran the whole uh, palace, gave her some instructions to, you know, some some um, helpful hints, I could say, uh, to help her along. And what I like that Esther, she listened, but then she followed. We talked about that last week. She followed their instruction. And in following their instructions, she positioned herself so that she can be in line with God's favor. And I want to stress that, right, because positioning yourself to benefit from God's favor takes work. And I want to stress that you ought to be working at this point in your life to put your life in position, right, to benefit from God's favor. And I want to say it like this, right? I want you to consider that God's favor works just like a light bulb. You can choose to step into the light or you can choose to step away from the light. But the thing about it is, is that when you, when you, when you choose to step in the light, that's when the blessing happens. And sometimes some of you, uh, uh, that are watching, right, you're wondering why the, um, the, that, that, that you haven't uh, got that next promotion or that the choice that, that was made wasn't you. And I want to, I want to, I want to impress in your mind that maybe, maybe you are not, maybe you have not positioned your life under God's favor. And I, and I, and I love to stress this, right? Especially to my young people that being under God's favor, it's going to take some work. Uh, and I'm not just talking about spiritually, right? Because of course, there are things that we have to do. You know, I have to control myself, right? I have to discipline myself. Spiritually, there are some things that I can't engage in or that I won't allow myself to engage in because I want to keep my life under God's favor. There are some boundaries that I have set, right? Because I want to stay under God's favor. But beyond that, right, let's talk about jobs. Let's talk about making money. I want you to understand, right, that you have to work to bring your life under God's favor. I call it preparation. And I've been telling people this, and I've been telling people this, and I've been telling people since the beginning of 2020, right, that the opportunity is going to come. But what separates you being chosen from somebody else is your level of preparation. And I want you to hear me when I say this. I've been doing TGM since 2015, right? And when I first started, I know some people didn't believe in it. Some people couldn't, you know, they, they could care less about it. But here's what I want to stress. I knew that one day, and it's not even where I wanted to be, but I knew that one day, right, the light was going to hit it. And my worst fear is that when the light hit it, that it wasn't prepared to take off. And so that caused me to work, work, and work, and work. It is the preparation, right? It is the preparation that positions your life for favor. And this is what Esther did. She put herself, she put her life, right, under God's favor by uh, following those instructions. In your life, it looks like preparation, discipline. It's doing the things Right. That, you know, uh, that are right to do because, you know, the time is coming. Right. And so and so when I was young, man, I didn't get asked to preach. I never got asked to preach. I mean, they was letting my cousins preach, my my other cousins preach. They was letting everybody preach. My little brother was getting engaged. I never got any opportunities, but that didn't stop me from studying. And I want you to hear me. Why? That was my preparation. I was aligning myself, right? I used the time and as learning experiences because I knew that one day God was going to show me 
favor. And for those of you that are praying, right, and, 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 I'm, and we're talking about aligning your life under God's favor. If God was to shine the light on you right now, right, if his favor was to hit you, are you ready for it? With all the attention that Esther got, Right. She was ready for it and she was able to, to take advantage of the opportunity. And I wonder, is your life ready for God's favor? Right. Is your life ready for God's favor? And so and so even though and here's what now we moving now, because now she got the position. She got the position. Right. But even though she got the position, the positioning didn't stop the problems. The positioning didn't stop the problems. And here's what the, the story goes to tell you, that there was a man named Haman. There was a man named Haman, right, who had developed, get this, who had developed uh, a disdain for all of the Jews, right? And I want to stress this, right, that she got the position, but the position does not stop the problems. And this is for some of you who think that that promotion is going to make your problems go away. Thinking having more money is going to make your problems go away. Thinking that having a bigger house or a better car is going to make all your problems go away. And I want to stress this to you, right, that the position does not stop the problems. The palace does not stop the problems. Nowhere that you get to is not going to stop things from happening. But let's take it a step further. Just like God wants to, why? Just like God wants to bless you, you have an enemy that wants to destroy you. And your enemy will use whoever he can to come against you. And I want to stress that, right? The, that, the, that the position don't stop the problems. And just like you have a God that wants to bless you, you have an enemy that wants to destroy you. His name is Haman. And this is significant, right? Because if you do your research, Haman is from Agag, right? Agag, they are enemy of Israel. Haman is named Agagat, an Agagite. That's a lot of it, right? But it's in relation to King Agag of Amalek. Why is that significant? Because if you trace all the way back to 1 Samuel, right? In 1 Samuel, it talks, it, it talks about why God rejected Saul as king. And what he did was God told Saul to destroy the complete nation of Amalek. Amalek. All the Amalekites destroyed him, right? But Saul allowed some of them to stay alive. And that is significant because had Saul done what God told him to do, Haman wouldn't even be a problem in Esther's story. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how many of you has God been showing you some things don't belong, right? Some habits you need to cut off, right? Some relationships you need to cut off. Uh, uh, and how many of you have allowed those relationships to linger? How many of you have allowed those habits to continue, right? And I want you to hear me when I say this, that when God told Saul to destroy all the Amalekites, it wasn't because he was being mean, right? But it was because that they were going to be causing them problems all throughout the rest of history. And I want to stress this to you, right? That there are some things that God will show you that don't belong in your life, not because of where you are, but because of where you're going. And I want to stress that, that some habits don't belong in your life. And he wants you to, to start to cut those now. Why? Not for where you are, but for where he wants to take you. There are some relationships, right? That he's telling you it's time to wean yourself off. Not because of where you are, but because of where you are going. Why is that important? Because unproductive relationships and unproductive habits that you don't kill end up killing you, right? Stuff that you don't stop ends up stopping you. And I want to stress that, right? I want to stress that because while you're smoking at 25, it's a good chance that if you continue to smoke by the time you're 50, your health may not be as good. You could have stopped it, but in the long run, it stopped you. Your diet, right? Oh my. God, your diet, right? The things that you eat as a young man, it didn't stop you right then. But if you don't stop it, the older you get, those organs, right? Those, those, uh, 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 those arteries start to clog up, right? And I want you to hear me when I say that you didn't stop it at a young age, but it will stop you. And I want you to hear me when I say this, right? Hear me when I say that maybe God is telling you to cut it off now because it's going to be a detriment to you 
in your future. I say it like this all the time. I don't go to the gym for this markers. I'm glad that this markers exist. But when I first started going to the gym, right, at the at the end of 2018, I did it at the end of 2018 because I was looking at the end of 2019. The habits that I picked up and the habits that I dropped off, I didn't do it for that day, but I did it for the markers. Come on, who I was going to become in the future. And now this markers appreciates those days that I was in the gym that I didn't feel like it. The days that I wanted to eat and I didn't eat. All the chocolate that I turned down. I want you to hear me. The chocolate chip cookies and fried chicken. Oh, I'm about to have a fit right now. Of all of the things that I stopped, right? Because I knew eventually if I didn't stop them, they were going to stop me. And I refused to let something stop me that I could have killed. How many of you, how many of you tonight, how many of you are holding on to something that God has been trying to free you from? How many of you have been holding on to something that God is trying to free you from? Habits, you know what I call habits? Those unproductive bad habits. I call those habits enemies that I like, but that are unproductive. Enemies that I like that are unproductive. They pose as the sweetest friends, right? The nicest company, but in reality, right? They, they're the things that feel good to you, but end up not being good for you, right? These things I call these unproductive habits enemies that I like. Are you holding on to an enemy that you like, but that is going to be unproductive? for where you are going. What friendships are you holding that God may have showed you it's time now not to stop being their friend, but to go a different route? How many of you have relationships that you're still holding, right, that God has been trying to free you from? What if God is trying to show you that the thing you're holding is going to be a hindrance? What if God is showing you, what if God is using me to tell you tonight that the thing that you're holding is going to to be a hindrance to you in your future. It's going to turn into a weight that's going to keep you down on the ground when you should be flying high with the eagles. How many of you are holding on to habits, to friendships, to relationships, to partnerships, to things that are unproductive, holding on to things that are going to be a hindrance? I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord, help me to cut it. 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 Cut it. Give me the strength to start right now cutting these bad habits, cutting these one-sided, unproductive relationships. Lord, help me tonight, starting tonight. Help me to cut these bad habits. Help me to cut these things out of my life, not for where I am but for where I'm trying to go. And if I could get somebody to hear me tonight, you got to start putting things in place right now, not for where you are, but for where you want to go in your life. I can't tell you how many days I stayed up praying and crying and reading and researching information that it didn't seem like it was going to benefit my life at all. But up the road, I started to thank God, right? That I did start some things that were productive. And here's what I love about that. I love it, right? I love it, right? Because I had to let go of some of those things, right? And it was painful, but I'm grateful that I did. I had to stop doing some things and it was painful, but I'm grateful that I did. I had to implement some things, right? And I want you to hear me that Saul could have stopped their problem years ago, but because he did now, it's now a problem to Esther and the rest of the Jews. What are you holding on to? All right, now we're taking a turn. I know I'm not going to finish this tonight. I know I'm not going to finish it, but I want you to walk with me. Haman, now he's a Haman of Agag from King Ag Agag from the Amalekites, right? And so, and so I want you to get this right. He is a product of rivalry. He is a product of rivalry. I want you to understand something about your enemy. Saul could have stopped it a long time ago, but he didn't. Because of that, their hatred and animosity for Israel continued to grow through the years and now it's coming to the head. And I want you to hear me when I say this. Oh, I, I really hope you hear me. I think I'm gonna have to stop on this point tonight. But I want you to hear me that the enemy does not start when you get old. And this is why it's important to cut off some of those things, right? Because the enemy does not start once you get 
50. He starts when you're 25 and he puts habits and he gives you things that hook up onto you that you don't recognize are going to be a problem. But up the road, right, he plants seeds that are designed to grow in you as you grow, right? Things that he that, that has gone on in your life. And when you hold on to unforgiveness, when you hold on to revenge and rage, it turns into prejudice. When you hold in to unforgiveness, it turns into anger. It turns into misguided rage. Uh, it, it turns into all these different things. Why? Because you didn't cut. That's right. We're not just talking about outside. We talking about inside that the enemy doesn't start when you get old, but he plants things right in your heart people that hurt you that you just didn't let go of that's still growing in your heart thoughts fears that are in your mind seeds of hurt seeds of anger seeds of fear right that turn into these things that you can't control as you get older i want you to get it the devil doesn't start when you get old he starts when you get young. And why is that important, right? Why is that important? Because I want you to get it. Because what, as the seed grows inside of you, right, that pushes you out of position for favor, that pushes you out of position for favor, the more it grows, right, you don't realize it, but you've now taken an alternate path, taking you outside of God's favor, away from the opportunity, so that the the door becomes closed to you. And I want you to hear me, right? We talking tonight about being positioned for purpose. But before we get to being in position, let's talk about being out of position. When your heart is not right, you out of position. When you selfish, you're out of position. When your attitude is bad, I hear God, you are out of position, right? When you can only think of revenge, you out of position. When you're walking in unforgiveness and holding on to things, right? Wanting to do people bad that you probably don't even know that gives you a semblance or a resemblance of something that you had, uh, had endured in the past. You have put yourself out of position. Bitterness keeps you out of position. I want you to hear me when I say this tonight because in order for you to be able to get in position, you got to figure out the things that are keeping you out of position. What if your mouth, the way that you talk to people, has you out of position? What if the way you handle your business business or lack thereof has you out, come on, of position. I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Help me to let go of everything, God, that will hinder my forward progress. And I said, let me marketize that. Let it go so you can grow. Let it go so you can grow. The devil did not a start right right when they got to Esther, but he had been devising a plan and working a plan and they didn't realize, and I, I don't know who this is for tonight, but maybe you don't realize, right, that the enemy has made you walk outside of God's favor and you're wondering why the opportunities haven't happened. You're wondering why the money hasn't come. You're wondering why the, or the doors haven't opened. Maybe the devil, right, has had you stepping over away right from under God's favor. Maybe the enemy has you out of position. My question is, are you out of position? Are you out of position? Don't let your past stop your progress. Don't let your past stop your progress. Come on, Haman, 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 Haman has been a product of rivalry. Now he's decided I'm going to kill all the Jews. And I want you to get this, that he doesn't just plan to kill Mordecai. He doesn't just plan to kill Esther, but he wants to kill all of the Jews. And I believe tonight that that's just to show you, right, by you being out of position, you... You not only affect yourself, but you affect those who need you to be in position. How many, and I pray this prayer all the time, Lord, help me, God, to not just align myself for myself, but for my kids. I am going to change the steward name because I'm aligning myself, right? I'm putting myself in position. Haman doesn't come up with a plan just to kill him too. He wants to kill everybody. I want you to hear me when I say this, that the enemy wants to destroy your life, but more than that, he wants to destroy your kid's life. 
He wants to destroy your married life. He wants to destroy your financial life. He wants to destroy your life. And I want you to hear that if you are a parent tonight, the enemy will use you. Remember I said that the enemy will use whoever he can against you. But guess what? As a parent, as a husband, as a wife, the enemy will use you against your kids. He will use you against your husband or against your wife. This is why we, come on, hear me when I say this, when we talk about being in position, maybe you are out of position because you <laughs> you shooting slugs when you ought to be being patient, right? You talking loud and crazy when you ought to be in prayer. Be mindful, right? And I want you to hear this. Be mindful that your words are not bullets that the devil is using to damage the those most important relationships in your life. Maybe your kids are not in position because of the way you talk to them. Maybe your I, 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 I hope that's a word for somebody. I want you to hear me. Don't let your words, your actions, your activity become the bullets that the devil uses to shoot at the most important things in your life. Your children. I want you to hear this. That the enemy wants to destroy not just your life, but your legacy's life. There are things, right? I have come to so many young people, things that mom said that still linger in their minds, things that dad said or didn't say that still linger in their minds, things that mom didn't say or didn't do still lingers in their minds. Not the parents not realizing that the enemy has just used you as a bomb in your own house. And this is why I want to stress tonight, we're talking about being in position. Are you out of position when you're out of position, not just you? your life suffer, but the people who you are supposed to be in position to help, now you end up being a hurt or a hindrance to their life. Come on, say, God, help me to get in position. Help me, God, to get in position. Get my mind in position. Get my focus right. Help me, God, so that I can be in position to be a blessing to somebody who needs me. And so, man, I didn't even finish that tonight. I don't want to go to the next point. You know why? Because I ain't going to have time. But I I hope that encouraged you tonight. We going right back to that next week. I have so much more to give you from that. And we didn't even scratch the surface to that. I still got four more pages in my notes right now. And I want, but I want you to hear me, right? That 2020, this is your year to start getting yourself in position for bigger finances, right? For bigger business opportunities, right? For more creativity. I want you to hear me when I say that. This is your year to start positioning yourself, right? Because the opportunity is coming. And I know I told y'all this before, but God told me he's going to send the rain. He told me he's going to send the rain. And if you haven't put no seeds in the ground, I'm telling you, you got to start tonight. Start tonight positioning yourself so that when God's favor hits it, amen, you'll be able to get to where it is that you really want to get to it. See the blessings that you really want to see and experience the life that you really want to experience because you have put yourself in position. I want you to ask yourself that question. Are you out of position as a man? Are you out of position as a woman? Is your mind out of position? The things that you think about, is your mind out of position? As a father, are you out of position? Come on, as a mother, are you out of position? As a husband, have you stepped out of position because you're frustrated? As a wife, have you stepped out of position because you're frustrated? I know problems are there, but are you out of position? Don't let the problems push you out of position. Amen. So with that, guys, look, I, I, man, I could go a whole lot more, but hopefully you can tune in next week because I guarantee you there's a whole lot more to this lesson that you don't want to miss. So guys, with that, thank you once again for tuning in. I'm Minister Marcus. Please go visit our website, www.thegodmovement.com. We're still on our 30 days through Genesis. And so, guys, it's a daily devotional every morning. I normally post on my page. If you want me to send the link directly to your phone, you can leave me, uh, maybe not in the comments, you can DM me your phone number, and I will definitely put you on the morning text for the daily devotion. Or you can just go to my Facebook page and click the link. I normally try to post it sometime throughout the day so that everybody that wants to be a part of that, you can definitely be a part of our 30 days, 30 days through Genesis. 
It's a 30 day devotional into God and into self discovery. So, man, I hope you guys can participate with that. Listen, also, too, every Friday we do a blog. So, be sure to check that out. I also put the links on my page. You can get access to all of that stuff and more if you just go to www.thegodmovement.com. This website is set up specifically to help you grow in God. That's it. Specifically to help you to align some things in your life, give you a different perspective perspective of problems so that you can find solutions. And so that's what I wanted to do. That's what TGM is all about. So once again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope something that I said encouraged you or blessed you or inspired you in some type of way. I hope my word resonated richly in your hearts and minds. And guys, please come back and see me next Wednesday. I'll be right here. Amen. Thank you guys once again for tuning in. I'll see y'all guys next week. Have a great evening.